All right, you guys, so we're going to be here in Numbers 12, and um, basically we're going to be talking about being betrayed by your brother. Um, so we're going to start in Numbers 12. It says, And Miriam um, and Aaron spake against Moses because of the Ethiopian woman whom he had married, and he had married an Ethiopian woman. And they said, Hath the Lord indeed spoken only by Moses? Hath he not spoken also by us? And the Lord heard it. So here we are. We see Moses and he's leading, um, you know, he's leading the children of Israel outside of uh, Egypt, just doing the things in which God has called him to do. And uh, here goes his, um, his, his brother and sister. And they start uh, picking at things. Um, Moses basically married a woman and they started picking about her skin complexion, started talking about something that she just couldn't change. So, um, here is your brother and sister and they are, uh, they start talking about you. Someone you thought was really close to you, uh, just sitting there talking about you, uh, off of something that you just can't change about yourself. Uh, plenty of times, you know, there's people in school who make fun of children all the time who don't have the newest fashion, who don't have the newest clothing. Um, well, maybe their parents don't make enough money to make that clothing, uh, to get that clothing in which you think that they should have, in which you think that they look like, and because they don't have it, uh, you, you, you cause uh, some type of depression in them because you want to uh, belittle them and you want to make them feel bad about themselves on something that they just can't change because they didn't choose the circumstance you know I, I look at myself I'm an African-American female and you know society you know they had slavery um we you know uh, a lot of us are, are you know in in this day we're not slaves but uh, there's still some type of bondage in society there's still racism going on in society uh but this is reality of what is going on and basically here because of the skin color. I didn't choose my skin color. I came out of my mother's womb. I was birthed. And I came here. I didn't choose my mother. Nor did I choose my father. You know, a lot of people come into this world. They come in this world. They might be poor. They didn't choose their mama. They didn't choose their father. Some come in this world rich. They didn't choose their mother. They didn't choose their father. It was just the circumstance in which they came into this world. And a lot of times what we do as people is we start judging people because of the circumstances in which we have faced in this world. I look at my life, you know, growing up and being an out-of-control teenager, a lot of the things that I did were the effects of the circumstances, the circumstances in which happened to me when I came into this world. You know, the things that other people wouldn't want to do when I came in the world. Those are certain things that you cannot change because that's the circumstances you were brought into. It says, so basically they were complaining about Moses because they were like, well, is Moses the only one who can speak for us? Is he the only one who could, you know, basically because God was using Moses to lead the people. And so they were complaining about Moses because God wasn't using them in the way that he was using Moses. And so they started complaining and see the Lord heard it. See, God didn't, God didn't want the he didn't you know god it's not that god doesn't want to use certain people for stuff but moses was a humble man he was you know if you look all throughout the bible moses was constantly uh going out getting the information like getting the information from god and coming back when you look at leaders in the church they sit there like I, you know i look at myself right now like i sit here and constantly like i kid you not like if you saw my notebooks that I have of information like I literally like last week I probably had like 26 tabs open on my internet server like just collecting information okay and breaking stuff down so that I can sit here and pour into people so even if I look in the bible and say say like there's um okay so say okay uh, like I was looking in genesis uh 12 last week and I was finding out what Bethel means and then I found out what the south means so Bethel would mean a holy place the south means that you were like lukewarm Egypt means you were all of the world I have to sit down and break that down all all week and and, and you know some of the uh, some of the lessons that I do don't come together all at once so it's like I have to sit out here and sit with God hours and hours at a time breaking this stuff down just so I can get 
probably an hour lesson online and here they are sitting you know Moses went up to the wilderness he went up to he went I mean he went up to uh, si uh, Mount Sinai and he fasted for 40 days I didn't see um, anybody else with Moses when he went up to the Mount Sinai it was just Moses he had no one else was fasting uh, for the the behalf of the people but while Moses was doing the things that God had called them to do they were out there building other gods doing making other gods so all of a sudden because uh, Moses, you know, well, well, you know, Moses and Aaron was helping the people build the other gods. And all of a sudden, you know, Aaron's and, and Miriam start complaining. Well, you know, um, you know, is Moses the only one that, that God can use? Like it is, you know, is the, that the only one, uh, spoken only by, you know, it had the Lord indeed spoken only by Moses. They start complaining. Well, Moses was taking the time to do the things in which God had called him to do. Moses didn't choose his calling. It was chose for him he just accepted it in obedience and and that is what happened see but we're going to turn over to first samuel and we'll see um this again in first samuel i know that i talk about this all the time when you look in first samuel you see that saul uh saul wasn't doing the things in which god had called him to do he instead the the bible says in, in first samuel 15 verse 22 and then samuel said hath the lord as great delight in birth uh samuel said it basically saying talking to Saul, Samuel said, hath the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord and behold to obey is better than sacrifice and to hearken than the fat of the ram. And basically after we see that God rejects Saul and kicks him off his throne and then Samuel has to go and anoint David. And then we see that, you know, David goes and faces his, his Goliath. Well, basically, you know, maybe his Goliath in life was something that Saul wasn't doing, you know, because Saul was right there in front of Goliath. He could have gone out. You know, we even see that Saul was sitting there trying to tell him, oh, yeah, take my armor, basically saying, here, take the things in which I use to try to face my, Goli my Goliath in my life, but I failed. But David was like, no, I got to do this my way with God. Because if I listen to God and I have faith in God, then it's I'm going to be able to defeat my Goliath. But I'm not going to do it the same way you did it because the same way you did it failed. Because obviously Goliath would have been dead, but he's not. And so here then, then you know, we see later on Saul ends up getting jealous because the people are like, well, David's, uh, David has slew his tens of thousands and Saul has... Uh, scribes of thousands. Well, you can't get mad because you didn't do what you needed to do when God asked you to do it. If you did what God asked you to do when you were supposed to do it, then, you know, there would be no issue with getting mad. But that's not the case. We see that another time with another betrayal if you turn into Genesis 38. Um, basically, we see earlier in the life of Jacob, Jacob has children. He brings, um, he brings them into land. He has younger children and then Joseph comes. Um, but basically they had came to Shechem. Uh, they had came to Shechem and uh, the brothers basically destroyed the city of Shechem because Dana, their sister, uh, the, the, the prince of Shechem had uh, defiled, defiled the sister Dana. And basically they went in and they destroyed Shechem. And because of their disobedience, um, you know, then they want to get mad because later on we see that uh, Joseph gets chosen for God um, and so now because of their disobedience and the things in which they did uh, they're mad at Joseph because uh, you know basically oh no uh, you know what about the oldest brother isn't he you know isn't doesn't he deserve to be the lead why didn't God cho choose him when you look back in Samuel Samuel had all these other um, had a, a whole bunch of other family members in which in which could have um been chosen but we look right here it says uh basically you know uh, Saul went to go pick a new king and it said you know it says and it came to pass when they were come that he looked on the Elab and said surely the Lord has anointed anointed is before him but the Lord said unto to Samuel look not on his countenance or on his height or his stature because I have refused him, for the Lord seeth not as man seeth, for the man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh at his heart.
So basically, when you look back in Exodus later on, I mean, excuse me, in Numbers later on, when Miriam, um, when when God deals with Miriam because of what she was saying about Moses, what she was gossiping about Moses, uh, things that were untrue, uh, things that they couldn't change, things that were chosen for their life. Uh, because of it, we see that uh, God uh, curses her with leprosy. Basically, uh, you know, le leprosy is a disease, uh, 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 like a deathly disease. You know, the disease, it's like a deathly disease. And so here she is, she's covered deathly, but this is kind of like representing her heart. Her heart is death. You know, God is looking at her heart. It's not in the place that it needs to be. It's not right. She's sitting there bashing the leader who is just called to lead you to get you the place in which you need to be. And because, you know, you don't see them as you know the Lord sees them you start bashing them and treating of them differently and not doing you know they're only doing what God has called them to do and yet you are betraying your brother so I'm going to put up the first few questions and then we're going to carry on all right you guys peace All right, you guys, so um, we see another betrayal in the beginning of the Bible in Genesis 4. If you look in Genesis 4, basically uh, Cain kills Abel because um, God uh, did not accept the sacrifice in which Cain gave to him because the, the ground was cursed and he gave him a sacrifice from the earth in which Cain uh, and, um, and Abel did not give him a sacrifice which was under the earth. And so because of it, he uh, got jealous of his brother and, we kill, and he killed him. As we see this uh, there again, we see that there um, in, in, in um, John 13, basically, uh, Jesus is basically talking to his disciple and saying that, uh, uh, you know, in the beginning of the Bible, it says that basically uh, his heel must, you know, his head must be bruised and his heel must be bruised. And it says in verse 18, I speak not of you all. I know whom I have chosen, but that the scriptures may be fulfilled. He that eateth bread with me hath lifted up his heel against me. Now I tell you before it came that when it is come to pass, ye may believe that I am. Verily, verily, I say unto you that receiveth me, whomsoever I send, receiveth me, and he that receiveth me receiveth him that sent me. Then basically saying, you know, uh, if you receiveth me, you will receive God, because, you know, the Bible says that, um, you know, I am the way, the truth, and the light. No man comes to the Father except by me. So if you receive this, God, then you will be able to come unto Christ. But Christ here is on the way to be betrayed so he can be crucified. He was just letting them know if, you know, once uh, he died on the cross, when you receive him, when you believe in him, um, you know, you will inherit eternal life. You will be able to enter in the kingdom of God. Uh, you will be able to have eternal life. Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. We will soon see that. But first, before he could die on the cross, someone um, with it, you know, needed to betray him. He needed to be betrayed. He needed uh, the prophecy to be f f fulfilled. If you turn to Isaiah uh, 53 in your Bible, um, Isaiah 53, basically, here in Isaiah 53, 6, um, it says, a lamb to slaughter, all we will, all we like sheep have gone astray. We have all turned every one to his own way. And the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. He also, he was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before her shears is dumb. She, so he opens not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living for the transgressions of his people. Was he stricken? And he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his, and with rich in his death. Because he had done no violence neither any deceit in his mouth. So he, God was pure. Uh, Jesus, I mean, Jesus was pure. Uh, he had no deceit in his mouth. Uh, he just allowed them uh, to crucify him. So here, um, 
he's getting portrayed and basically he's saying, you know, whoever I give the sop to, uh, basically, uh, when I dipped it, you know, uh, they shall betray me. You know, they didn't think none of the disciples thought that they would actually, uh, betray Jesus. And, and, and Judas ends up leaving with the, the bag of sop that basically, um, Jesus gave to Judas and he carried on. And then, uh, um, he carried on. See, there's going to be a time in our life where we don't understand, but we are on the verge of betraying Jesus. We are on the verge of betraying Jesus. Are we a Judas? There may be someone in your life who's just doing the will of God, who's doing the things in which God has called them to do, and you are literally betraying them because... But, I mean, it was it was in the will, though. It was in their will. The will of the scripture had to be fulfilled, you know. But it seems it's, it's, it's hard because it's like, you ha here's your brother. Here's someone who's walked with you in your discipleship. And you've literally sold them off for slaughter. You've literally took them and buried them under because of your own greediness. We'll see. It says right here, betrayal in the garden in John 18. It says, and, and Jesus had spoken these words. He went forth with his disciples over the brook of Credon, where was a garden unto which he entered and, uh, and his disciples. And Judas also, which betrayed him, knew the place for Jesus um, of times resorted thither with his disciples. Judas, when having received a band of men and officers from the chief priests and the Pharisees cometh thither with the ladder and the torches and the weapons. And Jesus, therefore, knowing all these things that should uh, come upon him, went forth and said unto him, Whom seek ye? See, Jesus knew he was about to be betrayed. So you may be going through some things right now in your life and you are about to be betrayed. Um, and Jesus just went calmly. He knew that these people we're going to do this in their life right now. You know, we talked about yesterday about how Moses was a leader and, you know, he was just leading the people and the people weren't doing the things all right. And, um, you know, I know that it's been happening in other people's lives that, you know, um, you've been talking and nobody's been listening to you. You've just been doing the things in which God has called you to do. And the betrayal is about to come because people, uh, when you're doing the thing in which you ha are called to do, uh, they want to try to kill you. We look back with Saul um, after David had uh, faced his, uh, his giants. Saul basically... Saul basically gets jealous of David and tries to kill him. Uh, so we know that we will um, be betrayed. Uh, someone is going to try to betray us, uh, to crucify us sometimes shortly because they know what it is that, th th that it is that God has called us to do. But with death always comes resurrection. Just believe that. With death always comes resurrection. And Judas, I don't think Judas understood it at this time. And they answered him, Jesus of Nazarene. Jesus said unto him, I am he. He just went away kindly. So if, if you're being crucified in your life, uh, no, you know, just go away kindly. Um, don't make a fuss. Don't make a fight. Just, just, just go. It says Judas also, which betrayed him, stood with them as soon then as he had said unto them, I am he. They went backwards and fell. And fell to the ground. Then asked he them again, Whom seek ye? And they said, Jesus the Nazarene. Jesus answers, I have told you that I am he. If therefore ye seek, let these these go their way. That he saying might be fulfilled when he speak of them who thou gavest me. I lost none. Now we look in the Bible. We are the disciples of Christ. The Bible says that whosoever... Um, follow me, shall take up their cross. Uh, we are to take up our Christ. We are to be crucified with Christ. Um, at some point in your life, you know, the Bible talks about how we are supposed to die to ourselves daily. We're supposed to die to ourselves daily. Um, you know, maybe you're at a point in your life where you have not died to yourself. You have not gotten to that point of um, Bethel, meaning, you know, that holy place where you're just whole and complete in God. But all you're waiting to do is to just die to yourself. Um, just be crucified with Christ. 
you've been playing the self for too long, uh, living for both the world and for both for God. But now it is completely to overcome the world. Bethel, um, you know, was a place of overcoming the world, overcoming the world. Why? Because you are no longer of the world, but you are a full, uh, complete, um, in Christ. You know, it says, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed to the renew your mind. You will be no longer, uh, conformed to the ways of the world. You will be complete in Christ. The world and the ways of the world will no longer sway you because you will be, uh, convinced. You'll be convinced that there's no other way. Um, you know, we, we may be betrayed soon, but our death is unto resurrection. Uh, we will, Jesus will raise us up, um, when we get, when we get death. But sometimes we have to die to ourselves for people to live, for people to live. Jesus Christ, he died on the cross for our sins. Uh, he was betrayed, uh, by his brothers. He was betrayed by those around him. Uh, he was innocent blood. The Bible says he was innocent blood um, and he was betrayed, but it does not matter because after three days, Jesus, after being dead for three days, he rose up, he rose up and he was resurrected and now he lives. And because of this, we can get salvation. Um, the Bible says that he the Bible says in Isaiah 53, five, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. Uh, Jesus Christ, he died on the cross for our sins. He uh, took the cross. He uh, shed his blood for our sins uh, so that you could make it into heaven, so that you could be redeemed. Um, the only uh, way to enter into heaven is by him, is through him. He did this just for you, just for you, the Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish. All you have to do is trust in the Lord. The Bible also says, whosoever call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Just call upon the name of Jesus and he shall save you. shall enter your heart. You shall be saved. And one day uh, when you get to, um, when, when, when life is ended, you shall go to heaven uh, because God God, you know, he will uh, wash you in his blood, he will cleanse you from all your sins, make you whole, whatever you've been struggling with, whatever things in which you have done. You know, sometimes we talked about yesterday about how Stephen, um, you know, Stephen got stoned, but it, 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 it helped uh, Saul. The seed was planted within Saul from uh, from the death of Stephen, um, when you think about this is the same thing with Christ, but Christ is for every single person on this earth. Anyone who will ever come, uh, Christ's blood is for everyone. He can wash you sin. We are, you know, the Bible says, you know, though our skins be as scarlet, basically God, you know, can wash as white as snow that, you know, uh, we'll, you know, we'll have like a fleece that is, that is white. You know, it's, it's clear, like it is uh, forgiven. He will Throw all your sins away, whatever it is. You know, I remember back in the day, you know, like I said, I used to be a prostitute wandering the streets and, and doing the drugs. And, you know, I used to literally call myself the devil's best friend. And God literally saved my soul, made me whole. And no longer am I uh, filled with all those lists of sins. What are those sins? They're no longer here. They're gone. Uh, you know, I could ask God today, God, do you see my sins? And they're gone. He's washed them away. He no longer sees them because I am no longer that person. The Bible says, um, you know, um, we are now, there's no condemnation for those who are now um, under Christ Jesus. There's no condemnation for us. We are now covered in God's blood. We are now long, you know, we have to make sure that we are, are you know, walking with Christ, living with Christ, filling ourselves with his word. Um, he has saved us and made us whole. And um, he can, if you're not saved, uh, today is a great day. Uh, you know, salvation is today. Tomorrow is never promised. And God loves you. And he wants uh, to be with you and he wants to walk with you. And, you know, if you don't have a mother, he'll be, and you don't have a father, he'll be your mother and your father. If you don't have a father, he'll be your father. If you don't have a friend, he'll be your friend. If you're sick, he can be your healer. If you're, uh, 
if if you don't have no shelter, he can be uh, your shelter. Uh, if you don't have someone to call provider, he can be your provider. Uh, you know, if you need a counselor, he is uh, the the count the great counselor. If you need a physician, he is the great physician. Uh, he is everything you need. And you know, if you have no peace in your life, he is that peace. If you have no joy in your life, he is that joy. Uh, a joy. I remember I was telling my grandmother yesterday. I used to be like the demon possessed man, and I remember one day I was at wits end. I couldn't take it no more. I told my grandma. I said, Nana. I said, No one can save me. I said, I searched everywhere, and no one can save me. No one can save me, God. No one can save me, Nana. No one can save me. No one can save me. And uh, a few weeks later, I was sitting on the bus with the boyfriend that I had at the time. And he said, you're starting to believe in, in Jesus again. I said, yeah, I, I am. And ever since then, he saved me. He saved me. I was taken out of the world and my life was changed. And it's never been the same. Wherever you are, whatever you're going through, as soon as you give your life to Jesus, it will never be the same. Yeah, you might have to, uh, you know, I, I can't say that at all. all of a sudden, it was just perfect and things were just wonderful yes i still go through things i still go through struggles but i have a god who goes through them with me i have a god who holds me down i you know i sometimes i feel like giving up but you know what i hold on because of him through this whole season that i've just gone through i don't understand how i'm still standing but because i hold on to a god he and and, and god holds on to me that is the only reason why i'm still standing because some days i can't even hold on to god but he's just like look it's okay. I got you in my arms. I got you in my hands. You, you're mine. I love you. So, so just come to God. If you're at the point in your life where you're like, no one can save you. You know, I, I've done everything that the world has told me that I need to do in my life in order um, to to, you know, feel love, you know, if you don't feel love, God is love, uh, the only way to get to God is through Jesus, just accept Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, and you will be made whole, you will be cleansed, yes, there will be a process where you might have to get rid of some things in your life, yes, there's a process where you might have to lose a few friends, but whatever God has for you is better than where you're at now, you may be at rock bottom, but baby, let me tell you, there is no such thing as rock bottom, because God created the rock, I remember I was at rock bottom, when I got saved, I was literally at my wit's end, uh, literally in the car high as daylight. And I said, you know what? I think I need to change my life. I need to change my life. And Jesus helped me change my life. Today is the day of salvation. Uh, you know, your family will betray you. Your friends will betray you. I remember after I gave my life to Jesus, I decided, oh, no, I'm going to go back to my friends. And I remember I got high and I got drunk. And everybody sat there and laughed at me. Oh, she's such an embarrassment. But Jesus never laughed at me. He loved me enough to turn my life around, to change my life, to love me on those nights when I'm crying to love me when I was dead in my sin, to love me when everybody turned around, when my family was gone, when my friends were gone, when I was sitting in the jail cells, wherever I was, Jesus loved me enough to be like, look, I'm going to take these nails in my hand. I'm going to take them in my feet. I'm going to die for your sin, but I'm not going to just stay there. I'm going to rise up again so that you will one day be able to rise and go to heaven and live with me and have eternal life in heaven. Today is the day of salvation. Do not put it off. If you feel that God is pricking your heart pricking your heart and you're tired of going through the motions of the world you're tired of going through the motion of society today is today give your life to jesus and i'll be praying for you all right you guys god bless peace all right um i just want to say to you guys um if you're giving your life to christ today i just want to pray for you um and i and i i just want to welcome you into the kingdom of god um god is good and um, i just want to pray for you in your journey um i just want to let you know don't just be saved and just go back to the world get yourself rooted in the church start praying fasting and i'm telling you um in order to get to a place of understanding, you need to open this word. You need to open your Bible. You may not understand it or get it. Reach out to someone who does understand it or get it. If you don't know how to, I'll, down down the bottom, I'll put a link of my Facebook, um, my Facebook, or and I'll 
I'll put my email down bottom. If you have any questions, you can also email me. My email is more than rubies, uh, more than rubies at yahoo.com. That's M O R E T H A N R U B I E S at yahoo.com. You can always contact me um, and get in contact with me. I can answer any questions that you have. If I do not know the answer, I will try my best to, um, you know, get the answer for you. Um, also, you know, you need to be in this word. Another great thing to do is um, watch uh, different um, sermons um, and um, on like the chapters that in which God um, tells you when you're reading. Uh, it will help you grow in where you are in your life. Um, make sure that you get around people who are um, Christians, not just Sunday goers, not no, but people who are living for Christ on a day to day basis, uh, trying to strive for Christ. There's a lot of people in this world who are Christians uh, who are not grounded, rooted in Christ, have a relationship on a day to day basis with Christ. They're just Christians by saying that they're Christians, not because they have a relationship with Christ. So make sure you get grounded, rooted in the church, praying, um, you know, uh, talking to God. Basically, if you don't know how to pray, just talk to God in a way and, you know, ask him questions, you know, things in which, you know, show, have him ask him, you know, to show you things in your life. I remember when I first got saved, I used to ask God, okay, let me win these tickets to go see this gospel concert. And I remember one day, I called in the radio station and I hung up and they were like, hello. And it was click. And I heard on the, and I'm like, Oh my gosh, I just won. And then I did it the second time and I won and I hung up. I was so mad, but I mean how life went, I wasn't going to be able to go to the concert anyways, because I, I had to be in Massachusetts and at the time I was in Virginia. So, um, you know, just, you know, because Jesus is real, he's real. You know, um, you know, just build up your relationship, pray, read your Bible, get grounded. When you ever go to church, you know, start taking notes and stuff like that. You know, meet new people, interact. You know, um, I know sometimes, you know, you may be shy. Uh, start to be out your box, you know. God is good, and and um, He's not gonna fail you. Yes, you know the people may fail you uh, to come, you know, but it it doesn't matter because God is here. You know what I've learned because I've even had people in the church betray me, but that does not matter because my focus. There's a lot of people out of the church because they are so worried about the people. What we need to understand, if you're a new Christian or even if you're not a new Christian, know that it's not about the people. It's about building your relationship with God. Because at the end of the day, we all have different walks in life. We all have different places in which God wants us to. I mean, God, you know, wants us to go. Uh, you know, Jesus wants us to follow our own different walks and where He wants to take us. And if we're too busy focusing on the people, we'll lose sight on the will of God for our life. And so I'm just gonna pray for you guys and then I'm um and then I hope you guys have a wonderful and a blessed day. Uh Lord, I just thank you so much for the soul who received you today. Lord, I thank you uh for the people who are out there who um are being betrayed uh you know uh, by by their Judases in their life but their brother in their life, Father God, but I pray that you give them strength right now, Father God, for the things that they're going through, Father God. I pray for that seed that is planted within them, Father God. I pray that it gets rooted down, Father God, that uh those uh the weeds will not come and, and, and suck uh, the seed out, Father God, that it will get rooted down so deep, Father God, that nothing can pluck uh, it away from you, Father God, that it stays planted, uh, that the, the person who uh, got saved today, Father God, will get grounded into a house of God, Father God, and that you send the people that they need to, to uh, grow, Father God, uh, that they'll grow so big, Lord. We know that it only takes a seed, Lord, to plant a tree, Father God, so that I pray that you uh, grow the biggest tree in their life, Father God, as possible, Father God. Whatever it is that you need them to go through, I pray that they uh, just keep hanging on, Father God, until they get to the place in which it is that you need to call them, Father God. Let them know that, uh, you know, be that comforter when they need comfort, that healer when they need healing, Father God. You know, as long as they hold on to you, Father God, uh, then they will uh, keep pressing, they will get to the place in which they needed to be within you, Father God. This Let them know that this is a life uh, a life journey, Father God, uh, that you will be walking with them for a life, Father God. And though friends may fail them, though family members may fail them, Lord, I just thank you, Father 
God for just being this wonderful God, Father God, who never leaves his child, who never forsakes his child. Father God, I just thank you so much, Father God. Let them know that you'll never leave them nor forsake them, Father God, that you'll always be here until the ends of the earth, until they are home in heaven. Lord, now I just thank you for allowing heaven to be their home and for dying, sending Jesus to die on the cross for their sins and, and washing all of our sins, Father God. I thank you for cleansing my sins, Father God. I, I you know, for everything that I've done, Father God, and still yet you love me, Lord, and I just thank you for taking me back every time with mercy and compassion and understanding whenever I fall, whenever others don't think that you should love me the way you love me, Father God, when others don't think that I should be in the place of where it is that I am, Father God, I just thank you for using someone like me because I do not deserve to be used. And I just thank you for everyone uh, out there, Father God. I pray for every single one of their situations. I pray for their family salvation, for their friend salvation, that they'll be able to be a witness unto them, that you'll be able to use them uh, to spread the gospel to all the ends of the earth, Father God. We thank you right now in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, you guys, I love you guys so much. And I'll, I'll continue to be praying for you. And uh, God bless. Peace.